there is, okay, great, so you got this training. Show me how that connected to something that you did at work. Because, you know, if you, if you go off and you get training and then you don't actually put that to work pretty much immediately, like within, within I'd say, 30 to 90 days of, of learning a skill in a classroom, now, I'm going to use the term classroom here very broadly to include e-learning as well. But I'd say within 30 to 90 days of learning a skill on a sort of theoretical basis, if you have not applied that to solving actual business problems, actual problems of, of testing, you probably lost most of it. Um, so, yeah, you want people who got training, but you also want to make sure that that training was targeted at what they really need to do and what they really need to know and that they applied that in the uh, in the real world on their job um, you know as I said RBCS we're a training company we love our clients we love all of our clients um, but you know that that we want people to get trained but we also want that to uh, have an effect but one of the things that I often tell uh, attendees of the training courses is you know our objectives in this course are are pretty uh, ambitious because I'll say you know okay we want to you know we want you to, to enjoy the course and if there's a certification exam we want definitely want all of you to pass the exam uh, but above and beyond that uh, we want to change the way you work for the rest of your career um, now and I'll, I'll come out and tell people at the beginning of the class I, I will have succeeded in this class from my point of view if one of the things that happens is that every one of you goes back to work and starts doing something differently and becomes more effective and more efficient right away and if, if that does not true for every one of you then this class has not been as effective as it should so you know look at that I mean what ask people that <clears throat> pardon me ask people that question in the interview you know what did you learn from this course that changed the way that you work for the rest of your life and that kind of puts them on the spot and it might be tough for them to come up with an immediate answer to it but I think it's a fair question to ask what did you learn from this course that changed the way you work okay so on that same note uh, certification now you know you guys all know based on my bio that I gave you uh, that I'm a believer in this so uh, not really want to debate the uh, value of um, certification per se. I mean, that can be a separate webinar. We can have a separate discussion about that. Uh, in fact, I believe there is one scheduled for next year. Uh, but assuming that you agree with me that certification of testers as testers, and I'm talking here about tester skill certification, not technical certifications like Cisco certifications, for example, but assuming that you agree with me that certifying testers as testers on their skills as testers is something that's valuable, then you need to select a program um, to, to look at. Um, now, your choice, um, you can say, I want everybody to be ISTQB certified or everybody to be X certified, where X is one of the choices shown here on this slide. Uh, and, and you know the, the the defense of that is uh, I want everybody to have the same certification is that there is a terminology aspect of the certifications that people learn a particular glossary and, and a, a set of concepts with particular words around those concepts and uh, that's um, that's something that they're that's going to make if, if everybody's got the same terminology that's going to make the team more effective it's going to be easier for them to work together and that's certainly true. You know, that said, I don't think it's that hard to reprogram people's terminologies. You know, I mean, this we see different terminologies in use with our clients around the world, and you know, you figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I'd say uh, personally, and again, you know, I, there's there's a defensible argument to be made for the other side here, but I would say personally that. Um, any of these certifications has value provided that you can again ask the person to explain to you how some skill that they they acquired as part of getting the certification changed the way that they work um, made them a more effective and efficient tester 
And if they can't answer that question, then you know, it could well be the terminology was really all they got out of it. Um, and that's, you know, that's not so good. Now, we, we are very careful in our certification courses, both live and uh, online, to include very significant hands-on elements with realistic projects uh, as case studies to try to uh, ensure that that knowledge transfer occurs. Um, you know, there are out there a lot of what I derisively refer to as brain cram courses that are designed to just cram your brain full of the terminology and concepts, give you no stepping stones to how to apply that in the real world, but get you through the exam. And since there are such courses out there, and some of them are quite commercially successful, um, offered by uh, competitors of ours, and I'm assuming that you're going to run into some number of people that have uh, a certification that took one of these brain cramp courses to get it. And you know some, some skepticism on your part is, is appropriate. Um, now, uh, if you're going to select certifications um, and, and you want to say, well, you know, I want to evaluate these, the value of the certification is, um, you know, uh, keep in mind that, the, that all of these certifications are what I would call fiat certifications. In other words, they, they're like fiat money, right? Um, money used to be backed with, with gold uh, or other precious metals, and at that point it was so-called hard money. Uh, it's, it was tied to a specific commodity, right? And now, lately, what you have are these these uh, reserve bank notes, uh, pretty much around the world. That's fiat money. It's valuable because somebody says it's valuable, right? Um, some central banker. Well, this is exactly the same situation with these certifications. These these are connected to testing reality because somebody says they are. So you need to really look at who who are the people that came up with this syllabus. What's their experience? What's their background? How does this connect to value? You should be able to trace the key learning objectives in the body of knowledge or syllabus back to the skills that um, we were just talking about. And you know, if, if, if a lot of those don't trace back to those skills, then guess what? There's not a lot of value because people are learning things that are not connected to things that they're actually going to need in, in the day-to-day -day work. So I'd encourage you to go through that exercise when you're deciding which certifications to look at and which ones not to look at as part of a, a positive hiring recommendation. Check traceability of those uh, learning objectives in the uh, syllabi back to the skills of your, uh, your task analysis yielded. Um, if you're doing international work, and geez, you know, these days who's not in some sort of distributed working environment? Then the internationalism of the program is a consideration. Can can you find people with that same certification everywhere? Of course, acceptance uh, by colleagues and companies and so forth is, is something to look at. And then finally, um, make sure that you consider the exam process. How does somebody actually take the exam? Um, how are the exam questions created and so forth? Because if you're going to rely to some extent on somebody having a certification, remember that that, that certification, you know, is based on them passing an exam, and um, so the your your confidence in them having a set of skills based on that certification really grows out of how good is the exam. So spend some time looking at these things. We've seen uh, again. I'm on the ISTQB board, and you know, I've been an executive officer and so forth. I'm a huge fan of it, but. Again, skepticism is, is uh, appropriate on your part. You should look at these things and ask uh, questions about all the certifications. Um, don't just say, oh, yeah, the guy's certified tester. Oh, let's hire him, because that's, that's the beginning of a hiring mistake if you rely entirely.